So good evening, everybody, and thank you, Didier, for this very, very nice and kind introduction. And thank you, Martin, Didier, and also Marilou. She is online in the Zoom. Uh, hopefully, she is online. I saw her name. Um, for inviting me um, to present the book that I co edited with two other colleagues, uh, Monika Altmüller and Susan Warschech with the title um, Sociology of Europeanization. I have to start with an apology. I have to apologize for my voice. I might sound for you like somebody who just supported his local soccer club or basketball club every weekend and uh, got drunk in uh, the whole night and then just arrived in Bruges. But uh, no, um, I just got a bad cold. Um, a few days ago, I had a train trip and I had a dinner with Christian uh, last, last night. Maybe this uh, destroyed my voice, I don't know. Um, today, um, today, I just woke up and I had the feeling, oh my God, am I able to do a presentation today? So I hope it's not too horrible. Um, but now to the topic. It's um, the book, as you already um, saw it, um, the title, Sociology of Europeanization. And um, I want to say just a few words about the book, what was the idea, and some, yeah, some points, um, some hints to the content. And I'm also looking forward to the discussion about you. And it's my first um, drinks and debate discussion, I have to say. So I'm, I'm really um, looking forward to what will happen um, during our session. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm curious what will happen. So, the book, Sociology of Europeanization, uh, was uh, published last year, 2022. It um, comprises 14 chapters on various um, aspects, dimensions of Europeanization from a distinct sociological point of view. And um, I mean, being here, being at an yeah, institution, educational institution, which is Literally, literally doing European studies, I don't want to stress like sociology too much, and I don't want to put political science against sociology, but um, at least one idea of this book was that um, there is a need next to um, introductions into yeah, the institutions of the, of the European Union or like political science perspectives, on actors and institutions of the European Union, our so-called mainstream European integration theories. There is more, and there is a contribution of like sociology. There is a like body of knowledge that derives from sociology, which is um, yeah valuable enough to to be put together and to be presented um, to the community, which is like with which does. Uh, European studies, European integration studies, and so on. But it's not a book that is like put against political science. It's more like a conversation, an ongoing conversation, and it's, as I said, a collection of the of what sociology can or might offer to this field. And it is also an answer to a question that was put uh, ten years or more than ten years ago by Sabine Sauroger and uh, Frederick Meron in um, Comparative European Politics. They wrote an article with the title Does European Integration Theory Need Sociology? And of course, rhetorical question, our answer is yes. <laughs> and I think many of you or most of you in, in this room would, would agree. And at least I would like to show or yeah, I would like to give some arguments and ideas why this is so. Um, I will I will go and I will say more. I mean, not I, I won't go into individual chapters, of course, but I will present you um, the more detailed list of content. But as you already can see, we put together um, like 14 chapters, 14 individual topics. That, as Didier already said, the idea was that could also be put together in a seminar or in a lecture and presented as a, like a whole course during one, one semester or a trimester, whatever um, framework there is. And 
the other idea um, is did he also mention this the didactical focus so each chapter ends with as as I, as we called it didactical um, section they differ from one chapter to another but the idea was to uh, at least as we yeah we try to persuade our authors to um, define key um, words of their article maybe to give uh, additional material because we realize that when you publish a book about Europe and about the European Union there are other books on the market the problem is after five years they are outdated because so much has changed maybe five years is still okay but after ten years you cannot read them anymore and it will be or it might be the same with our book but at least these additional material uh, should give you and um, the instructors of courses the idea where to look for new data new developments and what could be sources uh, to look on when you do the, the, the like discussion in the seminar um, so this was the idea of this didactical part so um, before I get into the content, I at least want to introduce my two co-editors, co Monika Eichmüller and Susanne Boschich, to you, because I'm not alone here. It's a collaborative project, and I just would like to emphasize, I'm not, I'm, I wonder why this is not completely on the screen here, but um, never mind. Monika Eichmüller is professor of sociology in Flensburg, which is in northern Germany. Susanne Boschich is lecturer of European studies in, at Viadrina University Frankfurt Oder, which is close to Berlin, at the border uh, between Poland, or at directly the border of Germany to Poland, and it's even a city which is like um, divided between the Polish part and the German part. And I'm I'm stressing this because I, I would like to like people who are not familiar with the German um, context of like European studies, I would like to give you the idea that there are some universities, and it's um, also strange when I look at it, that are located at border regions which call themselves Europa Universität, like European University, and there's also one in the western part, it's Saarland, they are now also trying to, even now, even now in times of renationalization, try to promote Europe, and uh, there is a, a very a traditional and um, a classical study program in Passau. It's also a small university in the south which focuses on cultural issues and it's, um, I think, uh, people who go there, it's, they, they call themselves as an elite study program and people have to have a certain grade to um, register for this program and, um, and it's less about politics, it's also like people also uh, have classes about uh, European politics, but it's more about culture, language, and so on. And of course, there are more programs, but um, there's a special thing, I would say, in, in, in uh, Germany that we have, that there are some small universities with the specialization on European studies, and um, two of my colleagues come from these um, institutions. So, I don't know if you can read it, I mean, <coughs> I go, I, as I said, I won't go into every detail, but uh, just to give you an idea, the book is divided into like five major parts, apart from the introduction. Mm -hmm. There is the second part that we called Where and What is Europe? Spatial, Cultural and Socio-Historical Perspectives. Um, another part, part three, is called Dynamics of Europeanization, Core Dimensions of Institution Building. Part four, an emerging European society, institutions, structures, and interactions. So you already get an idea of <coughs> major concepts of the book. It's about institutions or institutionalist ideas. It's about interactions, structures, um, and we try to mobilize these words um, like in conceptual terms in, throughout the book. And part five is about <coughs> conflicts. I would even say, um, we call it conflictual dynamics, cleavages, civil society, and social movements. And, and like, look, looking at it from now, um, 
I would say this part five had, yeah, should have even more chapters, mm -hmm. and there are more like uh, conflicts and problematic dynamics that we should have like taken up. But we try to uh, keep it um, like within a certain structure of pages and 14 chapters, so we always have to select <coughs> certain topics. And I have to say, we even exceeded the uh, given number of pages. I think that the publisher, he suggested a book of about 220 pages, and it's like, no, it's far more than that. Um, I don't want to get into every like, chapter, but I would like to stress that um, in part, like next to the introductory chapter, you can read the introduction. Um, it's like in, in this shared folder if you if you want. Next to our introduction, there is another conceptual chapter by Hans Jörg Trenz, who might be known to some of you. Um, there is a chapter that is called Space, Territories and Borders. Then one chapter um, that is uh, written by me and Monika Eichmüller about culture and particularly the like what cultural sociology or sociology of culture um, yeah, has to say and has said about Europe. At least um, uh, we try to put together some some um, of the major literature. Um, of course, of course, there are books about this, and not only one book. There are numerous books about culture and European culture. So all these chapters they can only like grasp some of the aspects and not put together everything. We are very happy that we also um, got like now, I would say, like prominent leading colleagues from the field of post-colonial studies into our book. And it was very important for us also to like broaden the scope um, beyond the European Union, beyond Europe, and uh, to get uh, the global perspective on it and the post-colonial perspective. So this is chapter five. And there is a book, uh, chapter from Tim Beichelt, who is a political scientist, by the way, with Susan Worschek on transformation and post-transformation. Um, then part three is, I would say, very classical. And this is, like here we, see we have the closest link to the one could call it mainstream European studies. There's a chapter about the econ like economy or economic expertise and the economic integration of Europe from a sociological perspective. There's a chapter um, um, on law and the legal integration. There is a cha and there's a chapter on the political field of the European Union. <clears throat> so next to these very classical fields, um, in part four, you can see, like chapter 10, um, is on social policy and solidarity, which used to be for a long time the major empirical field of sociology, at least in the German context, who, uh, or sociologists who uh, focused on Europe and European integration. So, so the, the idea was, so what, does social, what can sociology offer? Ah, social policy perspectives and the discussion about solidarity. Um, there is a chapter on like the social structure, as so social structure, we say in German, so democ democracy, demography and inequalities in, in Europe, also very classical empirical uh, field of study in, like, from a sociological pers perspective, and a chapter on mo mobility and migration, so a certain dynamic. I, I think that is very vital in Europe and around Europe, and I don't have to say more on this. And there is a chapter on social and political cleavages, which is also, also very strongly related with, um, interrelated with um, political science. And finally, a chapter by Zveta Petrova and Susan Borschich on civil society and social movements. Uh, so just to give you an idea of like the topics and the individual chapters. Um, what I would like to do now, I mean, then we want to have a debate and maybe the, there will be a discussion after um, my hopefully not too long presentation. And so I, I thought maybe for a start, I 
put together at least some general remarks or trends that would that describe, and it's also in the introduction, that describe major developments within European studies and when exactly sociology stepped into European studies. So one point or the starting point is that European studies are, like from the very beginning, an interdisciplinary research field, true, but it is strongly dominated by three disciplines, political science, legal studies, or legal expertise, and economics. When you look at European studies, I think I already uh, touched, touched upon it uh, before, it's not only about politics, uh, legal studies, and economics, there is also a um, strong field uh, from the tradition of humanities. So, uh, history, there, are, there is this, um, there's an, a whole um, association, I think, uh, how is it called? Um, historical uh, research on European integration or something like this. So it's, it's, it's a well-known um, study field of historians, um, language, science, philology, and also philosophy, also uh, uh, strong in um, European uh, studies, but for a long time, sociology did not like engage in European studies and was not really focusing on um, European integration. Maybe there you, you can find a lot of research and traditions that uh, focused on Europe in terms of uh, comparisons of European Western states, mainly um, uh, nation states, mainly Western European nation states, but there was no or only some studies um, on European integration. So in the sense, sociology is a late cover, and uh, but now um, that's at least our point here. It has its own place within this wide array of disciplines, and um, we try to locate it in between these first um, tra um, traditions I mentioned. So between politics, legal studies, and economics on the one hand, and the humanities on the other hand, and sociology, as already Max Weber defined it, has always this in-between position between the more nomothetic uh, science um, approaches and the humanistic science approaches. And when you look at the, like, the history of sociological um, yeah, research on Europe, um, you can, if you want, distinguish some, let's say, major trends or phases. And you, when you read sociological texts, you very often find references to the classics. So Emil Durkheim, Max Weber, Georg Simmel, and others. And um, this has been um, very strong, in the, at least in the German tradition, of like sociology focusing on Europe that you went back to the classics and that you took these classical texts as an inspiration for uh, reflections on European integration. So very, very, like one example, very classical, the, um, the framework of Durkheim, um, the transformation of mechanical solidarity to organic uh, forms of solidarity that he described for the formation of as he called it, greater societies at that time, um, the nation state. You can take this model and you can, uh, yeah, you can uh, reflect the, pro the process of European integration with Emil Durkheim's scheme and uh, get very interesting um, reflections out of it. And there's next to Simul Weber, uh, Durkheim, of course. You are, you also, or one also has to mention Elias and many others. Apart from these classics, there is a strong tradition of comparative research in political science and political sociology. Very classic studies, these, these um, heroes of the so-called post-war social sciences, like Lipset, Karl Deutsch, Stein, uh, Rockan, and so on. And this is, this is another um, strand of literature that is often referred to when you think of um, like also yeah, sociological studies or at least 
uh, traditions that are more than just narrow um, uh, studies of political actors or political institutions, studies that take um, larger sociological trends into consideration together with political um, outcomes, for example. Um, a third strand of research um, that we identified is the big comparative projects, as we called them, like the model of Esping Anderson, the, the uh, three worlds of welf welfare capitalism, but also the debate about vari varieties of capitalism. So these are major references that put like Europe or the comparison between the US and Europe in perspective and where Europe was like present in the studies but not in the sense of Europeanization and this uh, debate just started in sociology during the 90s and and very like it, it exploded one could even say it flourished um, in 2000s um, where society building and as I call it this isation research uh, was like put forward. Isation in terms of globalization, isation in terms of transnationalization, and also Europeanization. And so the major focus of this book is, uh, I forgot, of course, to uh, give you these points here. Um, so the, the focus of this book is clearly on this uh, final period here, uh, the Europeanization aspect, but of course you always, and this is the next slide, you always have these two different, what could say, um, scopes of analysis. On the one hand, you can do comparative comparisons, society comparisons or organization comparisons and so on, and you compare in sociology different um, yeah, Time, time frames or different societies in comparative perspective. And the second scope of analysis is the transnational perspective, which, um, and this is like the new trend in, since the last 20, 30 years, which takes interactions across borders, institution building across borders, and um, maybe also the something like the emergence of yeah, as we called it here, interpretation, like something like a European identity or uh, something like a, um, like the imagination of a collect, collective, uh, as Amy Durkheim called it, of a European society, or at least European, um, but particularly European um, interpretations, whatever this might be. Uh, so this is at least one of the conceptual um, yeah, frameworks that we put at the start of the book, but of course the book is not like, clearly then cut down into, these, um, in, into this framework, but at least it should give uh, you an idea what uh, sociology of Europeanization is about. And um, to mention at least some of the major points and highlights of the book, I would yeah, um, highlight five points. So one thing is that the textbook provides an overview of different dimensions, scales, and approaches of sociology towards Europeanization. It, secondly, raises the awareness for normative dilemmas of EU studies. And one of these dilemmas is that we as scientists are always part of the phenomenon that we are analyzing. And this is something that has to be reflected um, in European studies. And, and what, what it means um, to be part of it and what it means to be a scientist thinking, reflecting about Europe and uh, creating um, the phenom phenomenon that you are talking about. The third point is that uh, it's very strong uh, put forward also in the book that Europe is not just the EU, of course. Europeanization very often is not only EUization or European integration as this one project that, is, that you always have in mind when, or that you some always 
are taught um, when you think of um, the creation of the European Union. But Europeanization um, has also strong historical contingencies that starts, and there are ideas, of course, of, of European integration that, um, as you know, that derive um, from the 19th century already, or even um, earlier. And our, also Europeanization very often is not only um, the path of European integration that we know from the post-war period. And there is a strong emphasis, of course, of the cultural diversity of Europe and different images of Europe that you get when you look at culture differently and what European culture might be. Um, and as I mentioned before, we also try to embed Europe in larger global socio-historical contexts and in the so-called post-colonial conditions. Of course, it's, it's not, we, we didn't do it or we, we couldn't implement this in each chapter, but there is at least one chapter or some chapters, also the chapter on culture that um, emphasize this topic. Uh, the fourth point is that, or that claim that we make is that Europeanization is not just a one-way road, but conflictual. And Therefore, we have this chapter on transformation, post-transformation, and I would even say now that there should have been a chapter del deliberately on disintegration as well. We don't like this; doesn't mean that we would like to destroy the European Union as we know it. But at least there has to be um, some space of reflection of what disintegration might mean, and not not only the teleological conception of an ever integrating union that we often have in mind when we um, talk about European integration. There are some chapters on the cleavages, the social movements, um, the economic, political and legal expressions of European integration that are not always like teleological going into one direction. And the final statement, but this is more like to like to get into the discussion. Um, there is more Europe in socio sociology than sociology in EU studies. You can um, you can tell me now that it's not true, and maybe you have a completely different um, image of it, but at least, uh, as I said at the beginning, we try to put forward this book and also introduce it to European studies as an um, offer for conversation and as a concise like introduction into the sociology that could be brought into EU studies and European studies in a broader sense. And like before, I say thank you and for giving me the floor for this introduction.